Welcome back to Melbourne Property TV. Joining me on the panel today from Fletcher's Real Estate, Tim Fletcher from the Real Estate Institute of Victoria, Robert LaRocca and Phil Manning from WBP Property. Phil, today we're talking about buying at auction. Now you guys obviously do a lot of that for Correct. your clients. What are the tips you give them on the day? There are three tips and I suppose the first tip is don't come mob handed, don't bring an entourage. Just turn up on the day with just yourself and your partner. Right, understated. Understated. Look, so many times I see people arrive at the gate and the best girlfriend comes along, you know, then the, then the, then the parents of her come along and, and, and then the and brother the arrives. are out of control. Look, you know, they, they're under so much pressure. They give themselves away with over, over interest and I, frankly, I target those people when I, I stand near them during the auction. So don't do that. And that's the first thing. The second thing I would say would have, an, have a limit, but seriously, have some flexibility around that limit. I think it's so important for people to understand that if they just miss a property by ten or fifteen thousand dollars, they can often regret it. Have your target limit, but have a sort of a secondary limit in mind so that you can move into that secondary limit without a big conference while Tim's walking towards them saying, Once, twice, you all done. Have that ready, have that done beforehand. And the third tip I would, I would definitely re recommend is engage the auctioneer and dur during the auction process. If you're there to buy a property in today's market, it's useless standing back and saying nothing. There's nothing worse than a property as we've seen frequently, and Tim will attest to this, where they're being passed in without bids. You've got to become engaged in the auction process, get the first right of refusal to negotiate at the auction. You're doing no, no favours at all by waiting back, holding back, making the vendor suffer. Engage the auctioneer. Tim? I think Tim all that's, that's all very good advice, but I think one of the greatest misunderstandings about the auction system in terms of the buying public is that they think they're competing against the auctioneer. Nice. But they're not. Mm. They're competing against the other bidders and they lose sight of that. So but you, aren't you trying to get the best possible price for your bid? Well, so you're they're a little bit competing against you, aren't they? Not to go as high as you want them to. Yeah, sure. I, I, I'm not uh, unashamed about the fact that yeah, I'm they have to get the last drop out of their pocket. And if yeah. they spend more, well, that's their, their problem, you know. But uh, no doubt about that. But in terms of bidding, if you want to buy a property and buy it as well as you can, which is what their objective is, my agenda's different, uh, psych the other buyers out of it. And there are a number of things you can do. I agree. All those things you, you said, Phil, don't, don't, don't do those sort of things. Um, but make sure that you get into the bidding because you won't get a property onto the market unless you bid. That's engaging the auctioneer, engaging the, the public. If you stand back and wait, as many people do, nothing happens. And I say to people, if you don't bid, the property won't come onto the market. The worst thing that could happen is you buy the property for the price you want it to pay. Yeah. <laughs> And it's more transparent, I guess, than then you, you have to, it's passed in, you go into negotiations, you don't know what's happening around you, whereas when, during the auction process, you know who's bidding and you know where, the, where it's all sitting. Well, it's all very transparent, particularly when it comes onto the market and people often wait until the magical words are announced and that is, is it on the market, is it to be sold? Um, again, unless they bid, it des doesn't get to that situation. A property won't come onto the market. So you've got to bid. Even if there's a vendor bid and you feel it's worth that or more, make a bid. Because that's the only way you'll get the property onto the market. I completely agree with all, all that Tim says because we're, even though I'm coming from a buyer's point of view, because I'm a buyer's advocate and I represent buyers all the time in auctions, but it's, 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 it's most important that they understand that the auction system, if you understand it and if you've got the experience to work with it, it's an extremely fair and open system. It's way fairer than the alternative, which is post-auction, where you know Tim's in control of you know the offer flow when, when you know the to and fro on the negotiation at the auction you're there, you can see the other you can physically see the other buyer you can hear their bid, you can you can judge how keen they are by the rises of those bids and how fast those bids are coming. It's a much much better situation for a negotiation because it's out there on the front lawn or on the street. It couldn't be a fairer system. Buy, I mean, it's a bit of what you've both been saying, is that buyers have got to understand when they attend an auction what the notion of value is in a, in a residential auction setting. You know, value is how much you pay. It's not necessarily what you want to pay for it, it's what the other person wants to pay for it. And we see this all the time that people struggle with that notion of what something is worth. You know, property is not like a loaf of bread. When you go into the supermarket, there's a price on it. You can take it out of the shop for that price. The price is determined by the other people in the room or outside the, the house. So, you know, the idea of having a limit is fantastic and incredibly important. Understanding where you can go 
um, and realising that at the end of the day, you just may not get that property because someone else wants to pay more for it because it's worth more to them than it is to you and they've got a bigger wallet. Tell us, after something's passed in, one bit of advice we've heard during um, Melbourne Property TV this year is don't go inside because Tim will immediately want to usher you inside. Absolutely. Take you in. And that's Tim's job. And... Tim's job is to then have the negotiation to favour the, the vendor as much as he possibly can. So he, you say stay outside. I say stay outside and, and take a little bit of time, catch your breath, watch the other buyers. You've identified the other buyers because they physically stood there and thrown their arm and called out a number. Watch them. Watch whether they leave. That, that puts you out of your comfort zone a bit, does it? If they say, we'll stay out here, thanks, and see who's around and see who's hung around, have a look. And... Look, I don't know it puts it outside your comfort zone, but yeah, we prefer to have them inside. But look, I understand where you're coming from. And this is, this is the point about it. Everyone has an agenda. The buyer's agent's acting for the buyer. We're acting for the seller. It's as simple as that. You know, as we've been chatting here, one little tip that I think is very important in all of this, so many people who go to an auction, stand next to their spouse or their friend or whoever they're buying the property with, and they'll start to waver towards the end. And that's the worst thing they can do because they're signalling to, signalling to other people they're finished. And I see that so often. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And that's why I said at the start, have, have a sort of a secondary fallback position so you can seamlessly fall into that, even when it takes you to your absolute limit. Don't have a conference. Even get more aggressive and more, and more, and more forward yeah. when you get into that area. So often I've seen people buy properties just a little bit above, or I've bought properties just a little bit above people's comfort zones. And it's very important. And they've been delighted with the results at the end of the day. But don't get super aggressive, because if you do that, it can be counterproductive, I think. And people will say, I'm not going to put up with that person, I'll beat them. They don't like them. Um, so that's important. But there's a good argument for the buyer's yeah. agent here too. Yeah. Of course. I know. <laughs> and, and seriously... I mean, um, there's been a large growth in buyer's agents over the last 10 years. And we've, you know, so many more of them members of the REIV now. And it's a very competitive area. And that's a good thing for buyers, really. They've got that option. That made your life tougher? No, we love it when buyer's agents come along yes. because, because we know there were genuine bidders there because people play games, you know, whether they're going to buy or not. And, and Tim, I think you'd also, you'd also acknowledge that having a buyer's advocate in the, in the bidding crowd, you'd at least have got one buyer there that's completely educated to the, to the auction system, is completely prepared, understands values and has probably got the confidence to really participate. And probably Which helped, is obviously uh, to the benefit of your vendor. I was going to say, yeah. Yeah, it probably helps you get things going and actually gets the, the, the auction process moving. But as we said earlier, if it doesn't get going and it gets passed in and you've got three or four people wanting to negotiate, mm. like it or not, it can get messy. You can be as fair as possible to all parties, but it's not as transparent. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us on Melbourne Property TV. There you have it. If you're at auction, get some ground rules down, as uh, Phil said, and make sure you do your homework.